Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked up for this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have an Estabrook SD and this is in the oversized Rocky Top. We have an Armando Semenica Bologna Extra and this is the Arco Verde. We have a Classic Pens LB5 Calsecchi. A Sailor King of Pen, Sakura Nagar, and this is a Mackie Raden. We have another Mackie Raden here, and this is the Tatcha Miyabi Winter's Breath. We have an Anoto Magna Carta, and uh, this is a, a solid silver pen. We have a Visconti Ecstasy de Oud. We have a Visconti, and this is the Luxor Obelisk. We have a Visconti. And this is the Chastity Luxuries Southwest. And then we have another Estabrook SD. And this is the Oversized Sparkle in the Garnet Red. Now, I do have to admit that actually this week, I have probably about 50% of the pens uh, re-inked up. And I typically try to only have maybe two or three pens on an average week inked up. I haven't done as much writing as I wanted to in the past week. Work has been immensely busy, so I decided uh, I would, rather than flush these out, that I would actually bring some of them back, or actually quite a few of them back, into this week. So the first pen we have inked up here is the Estabrook SD. This is the oversize in the Rocky Top. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful diamond cast material. Diamond cast, if you don't know, is from uh, Mackenzie Penworks, and they create the resin with real diamond dust. Now, I, I have to say, when I originally heard that, when I got my first custom pen, I was a little bit skeptical because diamond uh, diamonds are quite expensive. Uh, even diamond dust, I'm sure, is quite expensive, um, and it does push the price up of the the rods uh, for sure that are used in terms of making the pen but it also makes these colors really sparkle even more so for me i do like the diamond cast material i have to say i i actually need to uh look at more diamond cast pens because i do like them uh i am actually glad that uh, estabrook are the first main uh manufacturer of pens that have outside of custom pen makers, actually started using the diamond cast material. So I'm really glad that they've done that. And I suspect it's a little bit more difficult because there has to be, uh, Estabrook are producing a lot more volume of pens, I would think, than, say, a, a bunch of custom pen makers are. So uh, although this is a limited edition, uh, it's not a numbered edition. So, but, so it's probably more of a special edition, but this is a beautiful, beautiful material. Uh, this comes with a steel uh, Yovo nib uh, with the Estabrook logo uh, laser etched on there. It's a broad nib, it's a cartridge converter. Uh, I can post the cap. It doesn't post deeply, but it does post. Uh, the cartridge converter holds around 0.7 milliliters of ink. The next pen I have inked up here is the Armando Simonica Bologna Extra. Arco Verde, and I did re-ink this one back up because I wanted a dark green ink uh, to write with because um, it was getting low. Uh, it's a uh, large pen. It's a pneumatic filling mechanism, so it has a metal shaft. You have a rubber or latex sack in the body. Uh, it will, I think, hold around about a milliliter to a milliliter and a half of ink. Uh, depending on how good that vacuum is when, when it sucks up the ink into that sack. Uh, it's beautiful material. It's a celluloid material. The nib on here is a 18 karat gold ASC Magic Flex nib. These are made by Bok. You've got an ebonite feed there. Um, so uh, it, it's a good, good, good size pen for me. Um, it, it's a celluloid pen and 
Uh, I like uh, celluloid a lot, and this is absolutely beautiful material. You can see here it's a numbered edition. It's 129, uh, but it's not a limited edition. So uh, it's really down to how many pens uh, ASC or Manu, the owner of ASC, really want to make in that particular color, depending on how many celluloids he's got. And uh, I think, and I, I may be corrected, but I think that... He's done the limited edition one because, uh, or the, the numbered edition one, I should say, not the limited edition one, because these are celluloids. A lot of those celluloids could actually go bad when turning pens. So it's difficult to know how many pens that you could make uh, in a series. Plus, he also gets a little bit bored and wants to change shape of pens. So uh, I think from that perspective, he doesn't always want to make a limited edition one of, say, 250 in a pen model because he may then want to change depending on how that is selling so uh, i understand that uh, it's just a shame that they are not a finite limited amount or limited edition run pen the next pen i also had i uh, uh, inked up uh, last week was the classic pens lb5 kawasaki uh, it is made by sailor uh, it's a beautiful pen it's made of this stunning diffusion bonded acrylic and if you don't know, I didn't know what diffusion bonded acrylic was. Uh, it's acrylic. It's uh, sliced uh, to a certain depth. And then it's fused together by effectively pressing uh, the layers together. And it actually fuses, if it's pressurized enough, down to the molecular level. And it becomes bound together. Hence the name Diffusion Bonded Acrylic. Uh, it's a stunning material. And then it's then sliced in this direction. So you have these beautiful patterns going around the pen in circles. A uh, beautiful material, material. It is acrylic. It is resin. Uh, it's made... So the, the material uh, is made for classic pens by another company. The uh, pen itself, though, the LB5s are turned and made by Sailor. There were 50 in each of these colors. This is a Sailor King of Pen nib. It's a 21 cat gold nib. It's a medium, so closer to a, a Western fine or medium uh, nib, but uh, it's a cartridge converter. I love this pen a lot. So I have that one inked up with me this week as well. The next pen is a Sailor King of Pen, and this is, and I know I always butcher this name, Sakura Nagar. Uh, I know that's not how it's pronounced. I probably do need by now to learn how to pronounce that pen. Uh, I'm I'm an English speaker and I don't I don't speak many other languages. Uh, I probably should try and speak the native tongue, uh, at least of the pen name uh, or the model name. Uh, this is a Sailor King of Pen. I got that right. Um, it's made in Japan, founded in 1911. It's a Macchie, it's a Raden pen. You've got these abalone shells, and the idea is that these are supposed to depict Sakura petals flowing down the river. And you've, I'm not too sure what the gold dust actually depicts, but uh, it, it's a beautiful pen. Some, for some people, it's a little bit over bling, um, and uh, but for me, I, I like it. Uh, I've got the Sailor King of Pen nib on here. It's a 21 cat gold. It's a broad nib. Uh, and again, cartridge converter. Uh, I do like the Sailor King of Pen size of pens. I do think they are really nice in terms of length, in terms of the diameter or girth of the pens and the sections as well. So I do have quite a few Sailor King of Pens in my collection. Uh, I did go through a bit of a phase in actually buying them as well. And buying more of them. Uh, I At the moment I haven't seen any newer models coming out that I can get in the UK or get easily that I am liking so at the moment I probably won't get any more uh, although never say never I possibly will in the in the near future when a model comes out and I think you know what that's a really nice color. So that's uh, for me. I got that one inked up this week. The next pen is a Tatcha Miami Winter's Breath. And again, another link to Sailor, just like the classic pens, LB5. 
Uh, this uh, is a beautiful eggshell. It's a crushed quail's eggs that are crushed and then laid onto the pen and then lacquered, along with this beautiful uh, abalone shell Warden effect there of stripes. It is a stunning, stunning pen. A beautiful. And I, I know a lot of people would say, how can you write with this pen, Dave? Come on, seriously. Um, well, I have to write with all of my pens. Uh, I don't buy a pen just to have it sitting in a box, a display box on my desk. I have to write with them. So they have to look nice. I don't typically go for black pens most of the time. Uh, so I do like different color pens and, and different shapes and sizes and patterns. Uh, but I have to write with this. So I do write with this pen a lot. Um, and I say it has a, a similar connection like the classic pens LB5. The Tatcha nibs are actually, although they're branded Tatcha, they're made by Sailor. So this is a number six size. It's an 18 karat gold broad nib. Uh, so it writes a little bit more on a Western medium to broad line. Uh, this uh, is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, but I have that one uh, inked up again this week because I like it so much. And that is just over a year old now. Uh, I got that in February 2021. The next pen, again, another pen that I've had inked up. I just love writing with this. And I know I'm sure you'll get bored of me saying that, but this is a beautiful, stunning pen. It's a very heavy pen. It's an Enoto Magna Carta. You can see the Enoto logo there in clip. And you can also see uh, that beautiful coin on the cap finial there. And this is the Magna Carta. So I will show you here on the cap band, it says Magna Carta. And if you don't know, the Magna Carta was a document in England created in 1215 and signed. Uh, and you've got um, parts of the Magna Carta engraved into this uh, sterling silver pen. And then you can also see again on the body here and also the English coat of arms as well. It is solid silver. It's a sterling AG925. Uh, beautiful, beautiful pen. Very weighty. It's a cartridge converter. Has a silver section which will tarnish. You can polish. It has a number seven size, a Noto uh, 18 karat gold nib it's a fine nib uh, with an abs plastic feed but i love how this one writes and i bought this at the london pen show in october uh, 2021 last year and i typically if i'm buying a new pen i will go for a medium nib uh, or a broad nib but most of the time if i think it's got a bit of a bounce to it i'll go for a medium nib uh, for this I really have been liking my Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. It's got a lovely bouncy 23 carat palladium fine nib. I do have other fine nibs in my collection. I just don't have many or as many as medium or broad. But I wanted a fine nib on this. So I went to the London Pen Show. I, I said to, to Feng and to James at Anoto that I wanted to try a fine nib. See how I liked it. I liked it. And uh, I seriously thought I'd be walking away with a medium nib. But I liked it so much, I walked away with a fine nib. So it just goes to show sometimes you need to test a nib before you buy the pen. And I'm glad that I bought that fine nib. I don't have a doubt in my mind. Um, it's, it's a beautiful writing nib. Now, the next pen I haven't had inked up for some time now. This is a Visconti Ecstasy de Oud, a beautiful overlay pen. Now, there's several things on this pen. Um, the first thing... It's an interesting pen. It's a, it's basically a perfume pen. Uh, so you, I will show you here um, in a little bit. Actually, I was just about to show you something, but um, you'll see here the the black resin here is actually infused with some gold glitter, which is a nice touch. Now, the reason why I was going to show you, and you can see the glitter here also on the black areas of that resin. Um, what I'm going to show you is that if I unscrew the blind cap, uh, and you'll see here that, get it around the right way, it's 164 of 388. So this is a gold-plated version. There is a solid gold version. But you have this mechanism here. And you think, well, okay, that's obviously a piston filling mechanism. No, it's not. You unscrew this, and 
you basically can store, I believe it's around about six milliliters of perfume in here. And this is a little glass dabber. So the idea is, is you have the pen filled with perfume, you dab that in there, or you do that, you get perfume on here, you put some lint cloth in here, and you dab in, and then your pen smells lovely. I still, to this day, have not done it, and I should probably try it, uh, maybe not fill the pen up, but maybe just dab that into some uh eau de toilette and uh and yeah and then put some cotton fluff in here and just have my pen smell nice uh but it's it's just something i i haven't done uh it is the ecstasy de oud uh, as in the uh, oud uh fragrance um the pen comes with a 23 cap palladium nib it's a medium nib and it writes super nice the problem with this pen is that it runs out of ink very quickly. It's got a push-pull converter because you cannot hold much ink when you've got some <laughs> perfume in the pen. So a great story, just not that practical in terms of the pen. Uh, however, I, I, I do like it. I love how this pen writes. So I do have that one inked up with me this week as well. I've not written with it for a long time. It's got a nice writing nib on it. So I decided I would ink that one up. The other pen here is, again, another Visconti and a very different Visconti. Uh, again, I've not used this for some time. This is the Visconti Luxor Obelisk. Uh, beautiful pen. Um, it's also known as the Luxor 88 because there were 88 pens made. It's a Yerushi pen that is, uh, you've got this maquillé going on here. And this is basically inscribing uh, with with colour paint the uh, symbols that are on the uh, Luxor obelisk out of Egypt. Uh, I believe one of them were uh, given to France and is in France. Um it's a beautiful pen. Uh, you've got uh, also the Luxor symbol here. You've got Ra as well. Uh, it's a beautiful pen. Uh, it is lacquered. Um, it's got a 23 cap palladium nib. It's a medium nib there. Uh, beautiful pen. Bit of a bounce to the nib as well. Uh, it's not a rigid nib. Uh, it's a Paravac. It's a double reservoir. So it holds around two and a half milliliters of ink. It's just a beautiful pen. Um, it, it's a pen that I like a lot. So uh, I have that one inked up with me this week as well. The next pen is, again, another pen that, again, I love. Uh, uh, it's a Visconti. It's a Chassis Luxuries exclusive. It's the Southwest. There were two models, a City and a Southwest. And uh, Brian to Chatterley called it City to Southwest. Uh, but you could choose two different models. You've got the stacked celluloid model, um, and then you've got this one. Uh, so the stacked celluloid is obviously celluloid. This one is the material that they use on the Speakeasy and the St. Basil uh, in other Viscontis. Uh, again, it is a celluloid material. Lovely black, reds, blues, a little bit of purple in there as well. Uh, it's a faceted pen. You've got this beautiful sort of um, southwest skyline there sort of uh, going on beautiful uh you've got this lovely gold trim to it uh it's a limited edition one 20 of uh, 28 uh it's it's a power vac it's a single reservoir but it's got a hook safe lock mechanism uh it's got the newer 18 cat gold in-house nib from visconti it's a medium nib again this has a little bit of a bounce to the nib i like how it writes beautiful writing pen uh people ask me why i go for visconti's I, first off, I like the design. I like a lot, lot of the material, not all of the materials, not all of the designs, um, but I love the writing experience, and that's what keeps bringing me back to Visconti. Like You can have the most beautiful-looking pen in the world, but if it doesn't write and you are a writer, then for me, there's not much point in owning that pen. So for me, uh, this is why I like the pen and why I keep coming back and why I keep inking it up. Because I like 
not only looking at the pen when I'm writing with it, but I like that writing experience. The last pen here, inked up, is a pen from last week as well. It's a pen that I bought uh, around Christmas uh, last year. It's an Estabrook SD. It's an oversized version. It's the Sparkle. Uh, it's in the garnet red, and this is in a diamond dust material. You can really see that diamond dust sparkle. And yes, it is real diamond dust. Uh, there is a certificate of authenticity that Mackenzie Penworks, who makes the material, uh, the rod uh, uh, pen material, um, that does provide it. Um, this comes with a uh, Yovo steel nib, laser etched with Estabrook there. It's a medium nib. I couldn't get it in a broad nib. I typically like prefer Yovo's uh, steel nibs with a broad nib. Uh, this is a medium nib. However, I absolutely love how this nib writes. It's a cartridge converter pen. So it holds around 0.7 milliliters of ink. But this pen is just absolutely gorgeous. This beautiful sparkly garnet. I, I like it. So um, I decided I would uh, continue writing with that pen this week as well. So I think with that, let's go and do a writing sample. So the first pen inked up this week is the Estabrook SD Oversize, and this is in the Rocky Top. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, this is a broad steel nib. Um, it does uh, write uh, quite rigid. Uh, as most steel nibs would, uh, but I, I still like it. Uh, it's an Estabrook SD. Uh, it's an oversize uh, in the Rocky Top. Uh, and it is a broad steel Yovo nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Diamine Golden. Brown, which which is a, a nice golden brown shade of ink that I am starting to like a lot. The next pen is an Armando Simonica Bologna Extra in the Arco Verde. So we have an ink swatch. And I think that this will probably be uh, cleaned out. I won't actually have this inked up next week, but... Who knows? Um, I strangely enough, I am uh, somebody that that likes to live on the spur of the moment. So I may say something like, I may say, "Hmm, tonight this is in the morning. I'd like a curry, a ch nice chicken curry." And then by the time tonight comes around, I want something entirely different. So who knows? Maybe I'll have this inked up next week. Maybe I won't. So this is, I'm going to abbreviate it to ASC Bologna Extra. And it's the Arco Verde. And uh, it is a medium 18 cap gold nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Ackermann. And it's Bazudan Wood. Brown. Uh, beautiful dark green ink. Uh, it's just an ink that color that I like a lot. I don't typically like dark green inks. I had a dark green ink for a very long time, still have Diamine Sherwood Green. I know a lot of people absolutely love that ink color. Uh, for me, I'm not a fan of it, but I am a fan of this Bazood and Wood Brown, which although it's an Ackermann ink. It is made by Diamine, strangely enough. The next pen inked up is the Classic Pens LB5 in the Kawasaki. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And I wasn't able to write with this a lot last week, so I do have this inked up this week as well. So I do still have it inked up with the same ink. So this is the Classic Pens... Or pen, yeah, no, it's pens actually. It's uh, I'm thinking Sailor King of Pen, it doesn't have the S, so it's a classic pens LB5 in the Kawasaki, which uh, spelt that way, uh, 
And um, Kawasaki is basically metal ore uh, translated. Now, this has a medium 21 cat gold nib. Uh, Sailor, their 21 cat gold nibs are on the King of Pens. Uh, the ink in here, which I'm liking a lot, is uh, Diamine Ochre, which, uh, as I, I think I mentioned last week, I typically have uh, Pilot Wash Zuku Sakushi in there. I'm down to half a bottle. I was going to buy another bottle, but I'm not, because it's now unable to buy that anymore. It's or it's out of production run, I should say. Um, but I do have a, quite a few brown inks I like, and Diamine Ochre is one of them, so... I'm liking that ink color inked up in that pen. So I think I'm actually going to start using the ochre from now on. If I get bored with ochre, I might then look at Diamond Terracotta that I also have as well. I also have uh, Waterman um, Absolute Brown, uh, which is a slightly darker brown ink. I've got Akamon SBRE Brown as well. So I've got a number of different brown inks that I could use uh, as substitutes. So I don't see the point uh, of buying another bottle of Sakushi uh, if I'm not really going to use it much. And uh, I typically have done this in the past. I think oh, I really like this bottle, this color of ink. I will go and buy it. I buy it and then I stop using it. So because <laughs> it's an end of life and you're kind of... I remember back in the earlier days when I started out that... I watched uh, Matt Armstrong at the Pen Habit, and and he, he had the same issue that I, I think it was Monteverde Canyon Rust. I think there was a few other inks that at one point went end of life, and he just uh, I, I think it was the Chromatic Colors of the Earth or something uh, range where uh, they went end of life. He bought a lot of bottles and he just stopped writing with them, and I think a lot of us have that fear, so because we don't want to run out of that ink. But then we, we kind of actually force ourselves into another fear of never using the ink, which is kind of strange. Uh, but there you have it. The next pen inked up is a Sailor King of Pen Sakura Nagar. And uh, again, I do like these Sailor King of Pen nibs. Uh, and this one is inked up uh, again from last week. Uh, I do like this orange ink. Uh, now, strangely enough, I think last week I had the uh, Visconti Watermark uh, inked up, and that had an orange ink, and I did say that I was going to clean it out, and I did. Uh, and I did say that I would probably ink another pen. Uh, well, I already had this pen inked up, so uh, and it's got an orange ink in. It's not a true orange, it's more of an orangey red, but I, I like this a lot. So this is the Sailor King of Pen Sakura. Nagar, uh, and it is a, a broad Asian uh, king of pen nib, so it's a 21 cat gold nib. Uh, it writes more like a western broad, medium to a broad, uh, and then the uh, ink in here is a KWZ, uh, and it's grapefruit, which for me is a beautiful um, color ink, and just an ink that I, I do like. It's not what I would call a true orange, like what I would call a true orange is probably more like Pilot Washizuku Yuyaki uh, that I like, that I had in the watermark last week from Visconti. Um, there are other orange inks like Diamond Blaze Orange, which is quite a bright orange ink as well, but uh, I do still like this KWZ Grapefruit, so uh, I have that one inked up this week. I also have the Tatcha Miyabi Winter's Breath inked up, and uh, Again, I, I like how this writes. So uh, this is a broad nib. Now, sailor nibs typically write drier, and they also write with more pencil-like feedback. I do find that on this nib. Although it says it's Tatcha, it's made by Sailor, as I mentioned earlier. So this is the Tatcha Miyabi Winters Breath. And it is a broad Asian nib. So I typically find that this writes a little bit more towards a Western medium. Uh, it's a broad. It's not a 21 cat gold nib because it's a number six size nib, even though it's made by Sailor. So it's an 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is a Pelican Edelstein 
and um, this is Topaz. For some reason, I, I, I had Jade on the tip of my tongue. And I was almost about to write Jade. Jade is a green ink. Why? Uh, I, I don't know. But that's definitely Topaz for sure. The next pen inked up is the Anoto Magna Carta. And again, this is a pen that I love writing with. So I have this one inked up again this week. Uh, it's a substantial pen, uh, both in its looks, uh, its cost, and the weight of the pen being solid ser sterling silver. Uh, so this is the Anoto Magna Carta. And it is a fine, and it is an 18-cat gold nib. But I am loving how this writes. It does have uh, definitely some pencil-like feedback on it. Uh, I find I don't get that on Tomoe River. I do get it on this Oxford Optic paper. Uh, uh, but I, I like how this writes. It's got a little bit of a bounce to it. And I say bounce, you can get a little bit of line variation out of this pen. Uh, the ink in here is uh, Diamine. Oh, grey, um, but it's an ink that I like, and uh, I do need to talk to Diamine because uh, I have said this before. I'd love to get a Lady Grey uh, ink made. Um, Earl Grey is is a tea. Uh, there is a Twinings to a Lady Grey, so uh, I kind of would like to see that uh, in uh, an ink colour at some point. I'm not too sure what colour it would be though. Would it be a yellowy, orangey? Uh, or would it still be a grey ink? Uh, maybe a lighter grey. I, I don't know. But yeah, that's certainly one that I would like to, to see uh, from Diamine at some point. The next pen is the Visconti Ecstasy de Oud. And let's do an ink swatch on this one. Now, this is a, a wet writing nib. It's why I like this pen. It's also a bouncy 23 cap palladium nib. Uh, this is the Visconti Ecstasy de Oud. Uh, it's a medium 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is a Diamine Majestic Purple, which is a nice ink. Now I say it's got a slight bounce to it and we can see this here. You can see you can get quite a bit of line variation out of that pen. So this is why I like this pen because it gives you a little bit of of uh, extra characteristic when you write with that nib. The next pen is the Visconti Luxor Obelisk. So we'll do an ink swatch here. So uh, this uh, I have inked up. Uh, this is a different ink. I was trying to remember what ink when I inked this up that I normally put in here. And I think, it, strangely enough, it was Pelican Needle Sign Topaz before. Um, but uh, this is a different ink I've inked up this time. So this is the Visconti. And it's the uh, Luxor Obelisk. Uh, it is a medium uh, 23 cat palladium nib. Now, it is a slight bouncy nib, but it's not as bouncy uh, or as easy to flex as the Ecstasy de Oud nib. Um, now, the ink in here today is Diamine China Blue. Uh, now, I could probably live off of uh, Diamine ink because... I have so many Diamine inks, and because it's so easy to get hold of in the UK, because Diamine manufacture their inks in the UK, uh, I probably could actually move the whole of my collection to just Diamine inks. I know that would be a bit boring, but it's something I have seriously thought about a number of times. There are still, though, uh, other uh, colour inks that I like from other pen brands that I just simply cannot get in Diamine. The next pen is the Visconti Chassis Luxuries Exclusive, and this is the Southwest. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And again, uh, this is another slightly bouncy nib. Uh, it's not a 23 cap palladium nib, though. Uh, 
and I'll show you that in a moment. So this is the Visconti. It's the uh, Chatterley Luxuries South West. And it is a medium. It's the newer 18 cat gold nib from Visconti. Now, you can see there, again, there is some line variation going on there. Uh, not as much as the 23 cat Palladium Ecstasy de Oud nib, but I would say similar to the Luxor Obelisk nib. So, uh, again, it's a really beautiful writing nib. Uh, the ink in here is uh, an ink that is uh, long uh, gone out of production, unfortunately. Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. Now, strangely... I prefer brighter reds normally. I don't like crimson, darker reds. But I do like this Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. Why? I have no idea. Maybe because it's got the name Corn Poppy in it. I, I just don't know. But I do like that. Uh, I do like Diamond Poppy Red as well, which is a lot brighter. And then the last pen inked up this week is the Estabrook SD Oversized Sparkle in the Garnet Red. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is a steel nib. It's a medium nib. Uh, very rigid because most steel nibs typically are. Uh, so it doesn't have much of a bounce to it. And I'll show you that in a moment. But this is the uh, Estabrook SD. It's the oversized in the sparkle uh, garnet. And it is a uh, medium steel nib. Uh, in terms of line variation, yeah, you're really not going to get much line variation out of it because it is a steel nib. You can get some steel nibs that have a little bit of a bounce to them, but majority of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, they're going to be fairly rigid. Um, the ink in here is a KWZ. It's a UK uh, uh, pen show exclusive, the uh, London pen show in the UK. It's KWZ Beef Eater Red. And again, this is another red that I am liking quite a lot as well. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. So we have the Estabrook SD uh, in the oversized rocky top with a broad steel nib inked up with diamine gold and brown. We have an Armando Semeni Club Bologna Extra Arco Verde in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Ackermann Bazudan wood grown. We have a classic pens LB5 in the Kauseki or metal ore in a medium 21 karat gold nib inked up with diamine ochre. We have a Sailor King of Pen Sakura Nagar in a broad 21 cat gold nib inked up with KWZ Grapefruit. We have a Tatcha Miami Winter's Breath in a broad 18 cat gold nib inked up with Pelican Edel Sign Topaz. We have an Anoto Magna Carta in a fine 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Earl Grey. We have a Visconti Ecstasy de Oud in a medium 23 cat Palladium nib inked up with Diamine Majestic Purple. We have a Visconti Luxor Obelisk in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with diamine china blue. We have a Visconti Chassis Luxuries Southwest in a medium 18 cap gold nib inked up with Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. And then last but not least, we have an Estabrook SD Oversize in the Sparkle Garnet in a medium steel nib inked up with KWZ Beefeater Red. So there you have it. That's my currently ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.